Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, second book in, chapter 20, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Verse 12, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now I'd like you to uh, turn to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. Verse number 8. James chapter 2. And verse number eight. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> James chapter two and verse number eight. James chapter two. Verse number eight. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. I'd like you to go back to the epistle of the Romans, please. Chapter 3. Romans in chapter 3, verse number 19. Romans chapter 3 and verse number 19. Romans chapter 3 and verse number 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his, that's God's, sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Verse number 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of of God. Uh, turn please to the next epistle, 1 Corinthians and chapter 15. 1 Corinthians and chapter 15. Um, and uh, uh, verse number 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen. And uh, final reading, go to Colossians, please. Uh, Paul's epistle to the Colossians. 
and chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 12. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 12. giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. I almost feel like reading that verse out of Acts chapter 10 again, but uh, I want to leave that. Uh, we read that already with, uh, with Mr. Swan in the first part of the meeting regarding the whosoever that would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that upon doing that, one would get remis a remission, forgiveness. That's the word, forgiveness of sin. Now we read quite a bit together. I would like to uh, look at these passages together with you and what is impressed upon my mind for the meeting tonight and uh, it's a joy to me to see how well the Spirit of God has fitted the messages together tonight without us knowing of, of it. But uh, I do see a, 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 very, a very clear picture that uh, the Spirit of God wants to present to us here tonight and that is something concerning sin something concerning sacrifice, the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And where do you and I fit in? I read from Exodus chapter 20, and I, I have not done that very often in uh, gospel preaching, not that I've done much of it anyway to start with, but uh, to look at Exodus chapter 20, as God gave those Ten Commandments, uh, really one could ask the question today, well, so many years ago that uh, came to pass, what's the, relevant, uh, the relevance uh, to us today? Where, where is it? <coughs> Here's something very interesting. When people are asked at the door, going visiting here from door to door, uh, what, would you have, what would you say you have to do to go to heaven? You would get this answer, not always, but quite often. You have to keep the Ten Commandments. And people will say, well, we're trying our best to keep the Ten Commandments. And then when you go a step further, and I'm not going to do that tonight, and you ask, well, would you tell me the Ten Commandments? People might get two or three together, but that's about all. Don't know them. So how can one say, I'm trying to get into heaven by trying to keep the Ten Commandments if I don't know what the Ten Commandments say? You know what I'd like you to do tonight? You think about the Ten Commandments. We just read them together. Could you tell me those Ten Commandments if you had to close your Bible now? Could you do that? So what does the Word of God say? Ten Commandments. You know, if we... Uh, uh, we're not going to go through every one of them, but it would do you good to take your Bible tonight, open it at Exodus 20, or you can go to Deuteronomy chapter 5 too. You'll find the same Ten Commandments listed again. You go there and you read through them and you examine yourself. Uh, am I keeping these Ten Commandments? Or is there some fault with me? Well, just look at the first one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Basically, what God is looking for now, and he explains a little later, that he is a jealous God. God wants 100% attention of the people in this world, of you and me. Place number one in my life. Do I give it to him? Or is there other things that take precedence? Other things more important? Oh, yes, there are. I conf confess it for myself. There are. Shouldn't be, but there are. Look at the next one. Thou shalt not make thyself any graven image. No statues of anything that is in heaven, anything that is on the earth, anything that is in the water, nothing. No statue. And then God explains he does not want anyone to fall down, bow down 
uh, uh, bend the knee before them, not worshiping them. And yet you will find that all over the place. You'll find little figurines that are supposed to represent maybe an angelic being. Little figurines that are supposed to represent the person, the lovely person of the Lord Jesus Christ. You find figurines of all kinds of other things. And people will worship them, adore them, ornament them with flowers and candles, bend the knee before them. What does the Word of God say? Don't. Look at the next one, verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Hmm. To use the name of God, the word God, in any other context, apart from worship or speaking about the Bible, speaking about good things concerning God. But something goes wrong and you hear a phrase with the word God in it or the name of the Lord Jesus in it. Or somebody is amazed at something and the first thing, some kind of a phrase with the word Jesus or the word God in it. What did we just read? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That is taking the name of the Lord God in vain. We could go further through the list now, apart from the one, uh, the fourth commandment regarding the Sabbath day, the New Testament preaches, would teach us something else concerning the Sabbath day, and that, the teaching of the Lord Jesus, overrules. And yet going into the New Testament, the Lord Jesus will, will deal with the law, and he will reinstate commandments to show that they have not lost their relevance today. So why would we have them? Can we ask this question tonight? Why would we have them? Why would we have commandments? Why would we have these commandments? Why? Romans chapter 3 gives us very clear answer. Why are the commandments, the law, why are they given? To prove that every person in this world, every person in this tent, speaker included, have transgressed them. That people like you and me are sinners before God would also do good to read all of Romans chapter 3 tonight, right after you read Exodus 20. And you'll find out that the Spirit of God guides the great apostle Paul to record for us that there is none righteous, no, not one, that all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. Friend, tonight we're guilty. Verse number 19, we read it together. Romans 3, 19, that all the world may become guilty before God purpose of the law. To point out what sin is. This is sin. Disobedience against God's commandments. I had in mind to read uh, back in Genesis chapter 2 and in chapter 3 as well. Genesis chapter 2, we could have read that the Lord God, he put Adam in the garden of Eden. He told him not to eat of that tree in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I thought we should go down to Genesis 3 and read there a little bit as well, but I didn't. So we read so many other portions. And there we would have read, they did exactly that. Disobedience to a commandment, very simple commandment that God had given. So what is sin tonight, friend? It is to disobey God's commandment, whatever it is. And while I was sitting there, I had to think of James chapter 2. I had not purpose to read it, but I felt we should. Because one might say, well, I am generally speaking pretty good. I am fulfilling as much as I can, as much as I possibly can. Is this not enough? What does God say through James? Recorded, recorded in the Bible. If one 